Greetings. My name is Dr. Sterling Silverman. That's Sterling, S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G. Online, I'm known by my nickname, Survival Doc. And many of my friends just call me Doc. This is my casting video for Screaming Flea Productions. I'm down here in my basement where I keep a lot of my survival supplies. What is the reason behind your prepping? Why do you prep? What are your core beliefs about the apocalypse? Well, the reason I prep is because through experience I learned the value of prepping. I used to live in Gulfport, Mississippi, and we received hurricane uh, scares down there on a regular basis at least two or three times every year. And at that time I noticed I had just moved to Gulfport, and I noticed that whenever we had a, a hurricane warning, the grocery stores were all crowded with people. There were long lines of people at the gas stations, and people were uh, at the grocery stores buying batteries and bottled water, and they were spending a lot of time waiting in line. And this didn't make any sense to me because I thought, you know, we get hurricane warnings down here every year. I mean, they're very predictable during hurricane season. Why do you wait till the last minute and then you spend all of your valuable time when you could be things, uh, be doing other things that are more productive, you spend all your valuable time waiting in line uh, trying to buy batteries and uh, bottled water. Uh, and these are things that you could easily store for, uh, uh, for an emergency. And so one of the first things I started doing was I started storing bottled water and batteries, um, and then other uh, items uh, such as flashlights, uh, uh, ways that I could cook uh, my food if we uh, lost electricity, and, uh, and things like that. Well, that was back in the uh, 80s, uh, and about that same time, I became aware through some readings of uh, some economic uh, articles, I became aware um, of where I stood as a baby boomer. Uh, again, in the mid-80s is when I first started uh, working uh, for myself, and uh, 1984 was when I first went into business for myself, and the government was taking uh, money, or I had to pay to the, I was self-employed, I had to pay uh, money to the government for my Social Security, and I looked forward to uh, my retirement, and, and I realized that uh, as a baby boomer, there were a lot of uh, people who were paying into the system, and I realized that the government was not putting aside that money, or they were not investing it or saving it, the government was just spending it. Well, anybody who could do the math could understand that when baby boomers as a group retired, there were going to be a whole lot less people paying into the system. Um, and a whole lot more people like myself who were, were going to be drawing out of the system, uh, collecting our Social Security checks and our Medicare. And anybody who knows some simple math could, could do the figures and understand that that wasn't going to work, especially since the government was in debt and every single year they were going further and further and further into debt. So I read some articles written by some economists and they talked about how when the governments get in this situation, what they usually do is they just print their way out of debt just by printing more money. And that's something they could do when, uh, since we were no longer on a gold and silver standard, there was no limitations on the amount of paper money that the government could print. And throughout history, I discovered that this is something that has repeated itself over and over. And when governments get into debt like that, that is always their way out. They don't just default on their debt. They just print money and print money and print money. All right, the problem with that, of course, is the more money you print, the more inflation you create. So even though you may be getting your Social Security checks, uh, the, the checks won't buy as much because prices are going up faster than your checks are going up. And so looking forward to my retirement, I said, well, you know, this isn't going to work. I don't want to retire and end up in the poorhouse. So at that time, I started uh, putting away gold and silver because another thing I became aware of was I became aware of uh, when the uh, dollar decreases in value, there's always an inverse relationship in gold and silver increase in value. And uh, back then, the first silver that I bought, I paid $4 an ounce for it. And now silver today is, is $44 an ounce. 
So the silver that I bought has increased 11 fold and that was during a time when most other investments have decreased in value. So that has turned out well for us and that is what uh, turned my wife into a believer and that is what a lot, a lot of the people who thought I was kind of crazy for doing this prepping stuff they've come to realize that I wasn't really so crazy after all and now some of the people who thought I was crazy I'm talking about like family members some of the people who thought I was crazy are now buying gold and silver because they can see that what I was talking about way back then is beginning to come into effect what are my core beliefs about the apocalypse I don't, I don't really like to use the word apocalypse. Apocalypse sounds uh, so much like the end of the world type of scenario. I don't think that we are at the end of the world. Um, I think that uh, we've come through many uh, crises in the past, like the Great Depression um, and, and Great World Wars. And I think that we'll probably come out of this eventually. Uh, so I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't really put any stock in the 2012 uh, prophecy. Uh, I think that that might just be a diversion uh, that's, that's put out there. Uh, I started prepping a long time before anybody was ever talking about 2012. 2012 doesn't mean anything to me. It's just perhaps uh, it's another reason why we should be prepping, but there are so many other reasons besides besides 2012. I don't think the world's going to come to an end in 2012. Uh, it, it certainly looks like uh, some of the events that are occurring right now, like the declining dollar or the collapse in the economy, it does look like those events are coming to a head and it looks like they may be coming to a head right around 2012. So their, 2012 may turn out to be a significant date, but I don't uh, really put any uh, stock in the Mayan prophecy. How are you personally preparing or prepping? Specifically, what kinds of things do you have in preparation? What is your grand plan? How are you prepping or preparing your family? Well, personally, how I'm prepping, uh, prepping is just is something that just takes uh, takes has many facets. It takes up a, a lot of different areas of your life. Uh, a lot of the prepping begins right here. I think that uh, primarily. Um, the most important thing to prep is your mind. And I think um, two ways to do that. One is uh, when, you, when you are prepared and, and you're expecting something, then when it happens, you don't panic. Uh, you keep a cool head and you just work sensibly through a situation. All right, the other part of prepping that's in your mind is your, your skills or, or your knowledge. Uh, I know uh, people who uh, live out in rural parts of Missouri here and these people have been growing gardens for years they've been canning food they have livestock they have uh, rifles they go deer hunting they know how they don't take their deer to a, a meat processing plant they know how to uh, cut up and um, butcher their own deer and uh, these people uh, have skills that uh, most people living in the uh, urban area, and I live in a suburb, I live in pretty much an urban area here, and I can see uh, a lot of people around me have no, they wouldn't have a clue of how to, to grow a garden or, or to, to hunt or to um, can or preserve foods. So there are a lot of skills involved in prepping, and these are skills that can be learned, of course. Um, and so uh, I learn as much as I can about food pres preservation techniques, about hunting, about um, using uh, firearms. I have uh, taken a lot of courses in using firearms. I've, I've, I've taken several weekend courses where I've learned to uh, shoot uh, handguns, for example. And then I've also taken several weekend courses where I've learned rifle marksmanship. But there are a lot of skills that, that need to be learned. Uh, first aid, uh, as um, I am a, a chiropractor and part of my chiropractic education was a lot of uh, first aid type training. We actually had to be certified by the American Red Cross in uh, fir first aid. So I, ha I had a head start on that, but anybody can take a Red Cross course and learn first aid. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we need up here. The other part that I prepare is primarily by uh, stockpiling things. Like here in my basement, you can see how I stockpile foods. And, and what's most obvious here are the canned goods that I, I stockpile. 
Uh, canned goods, I think, are a good place to start, and that's probably where a lot of people should start because cans are not very expensive. They have a shelf life of about four or five years. Now, there are foods, I have other foods that are put away that have longer shelf life, uh, foods that I have bought that were already prepared, and they're in nitrogen packs with, packs with um, oxygen, oxygen absorbers and things like that. And they, they have like a 10 to a 20 up to a 25 year uh, shelf life. So I've also got a lot of foods like that uh, stored away. But primarily, as you can see, I uh, like uh, canned goods because canned goods are uh, inexpensive. It's something that whenever you go to the grocery store, you can just pick up a few extra ones and then gradually over time without breaking your budget, you can add a few cans to your stock. How am I preparing, prepping my family? Well, I'm prepping my family by uh, putting up supplies for them. I try to put up enough supplies for, um, for everybody. My wife works outside the home. She doesn't have a lot of time to uh, do the prepping. The prepping is pretty much my, my job. Um, she does help me with things like she helps me in the garden quite a bit. She helps me uh, uh, with the food preservation, with our canning our foods and stuff like that. Uh, but, I, but I talk to my family a lot and I have two grown children now. I talk to them. Uh, about prepping and I've uh, finally uh, I have my son my daughter's not really on board yet but my son who's a little bit older he's in the Air Force and has three uh, children of his own and he has over the years seen the wisdom of some of the things that I've been telling him and he has he is now um, investing in uh, in in silver and he's also putting a little food uh, away in storage too do you have a bunker a bug out location or even an emergency meeting place well, my bunker pretty much is our basement here. If we have a, a hurricane, or um, not a hurricane, we don't have hurricanes here in Missouri, but if we have a tornado, uh, this is our, our safe uh, hiding place. It's also where a lot of our supplies are. I don't really have a bug out location. We're pretty much gonna be dug in here. Uh, we're not gonna bug out unless we absolutely are forced to. And even if the uh, authorities come and recommend that we, uh, that we leave our location, we're not, we're, we're, we're dug in here. Uh, now, of course, we will leave the location if uh, they're like toxic gases or radiation or something like that that we really have to get away from. But ordinarily, we're not going to uh, uh, a, uh, a FEMA camp or um, uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're dug in here. This is where our supplies are. Emergency meeting place. Well, we do have a couple of, um, our primary, our first emergency meeting place is right here, trying to get everybody back home again. And if something has uh, happened to our home and we can't get in here, the streets are, 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 are locked up. Uh, due to um, um, the authorities have the streets locked up or there the an earthquake in the house has collapsed or something like that. We just can't get to our home. We do have a couple of meeting places. One is we've agreed upon a neighbor's house, which is real close. If we can't get that close to the house, we've agreed up on our da daughter's house, which is a little bit uh, further away. Um, and then um, if, if we can't get to that location, then there's a parking lot in a, in a, in a uh, large church that we uh, attend where we will meet up. What measures have you taken to ensure that other people won't pillage your supply if there is an apocalypse? Are you well versed in firearms? Yes, I'm well versed in firearms. As I mentioned, I've taken a lot of firearms courses. I'm very good with uh, handguns. I'm also very good with rifles. Would you be willing to have a survivalist expert come out and evaluate your preparation? Sure, I would welcome it. I would uh, love to. Uh, um, I learn a lot of things from other survivalists um, on online on YouTube. I watch a lot of uh, other survivalists who make videos like I do. Uh, a lot of times, people come up with ideas that uh, that I haven't thought of that I learned from. Do you feel that preppers or survivalists are misunderstood? Why? Yes, I think we are misunderstood. I think for one thing, people think that we are pessimists and survivalists are not actually pessimists. We are optimists and we are optimists because we are making plans to get through a disaster. Uh, I talked to one fella one time when he found out that I was in the prep and he said, you know, if something happens, he said, I'm probably just gonna die. Well, that's what I call extreme pessimism. Uh, so as preppers, we wouldn't be putting these things away to survive if we did if we weren't optimistic and thought that we could get through a situation so preppers are not pessimists we are optimists another thing people think that we are conspiracy theorists um well you know to that i have to say guilty as charged um, if there is a conspiracy against you uh then denying it doesn't make it go away and uh, and i think that there are um 
Um, a lot of things going on right now against us, a lot of things going on against the American people. There are a lot of people who want to, uh, say, make, um, uh, take away our guns, make firearms illegal, victim disarmament. They've done that in Australia. They did that in the United Kingdom. There are a lot of people who are trying to do that here in the United States. So if you don't think that people um, are conspiring against us, then um, I think you got your head in the sand. Um, I think there are also people conspiring against us as far as the economy is concerned. Um, I think the people are being fleeced uh, through inflation because when, 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 they, when they print money, uh, it, a lot of people don't realize it, but it actually makes the money that you have less uh, valuable. And so your money actually spends less, that's inflation. Uh, and so that is actually a way of sucking wealth uh, from people. And, uh, and it's a way of taxing people without them even knowing it. You tax them by making the money that they have worth less and less and less. And I think we're being fleeced right now in this country um, from the people who, the, from the banks who are, who are printing money like crazy. So conspiracy theorists, I'd have to say guilty as charged. Um, now, of course, there are a lot of people who believe in a lot of other things. Uh, cons uh, um, the uh, preppers are, you can't put them in one category. Like I said, uh, I don't put any stock in, t in 2012. There are a lot of people who do put stock in 2012. There are people of a religious um, uh, background who think that this is the, this is the end and uh, we're in the time of the revelation. And my, what I say to them is, you know, every single generation since Christ died thought that they were in the end times. And uh, they've all so far turned out to be wrong. And so I wouldn't put all of my, uh, uh, eggs in that basket. It seems that survivalism and prepping is in the news a lot more these days and we're hearing more people getting prepared. What do you think of this? Well, I think there's a, there's a reason for that. I, like I said, I've been in prepping for many years and back when I first started prepping it just was not something that you heard about and people, when you talked about a survivalist it was some crazy guy uh, with a long beard out in the uh, Arkansas mountains. Um, holding out um, and now uh, prepping and I think that uh, an uh, illustration of this is uh, like the television uh, programs like this one that are coming out about prepping. This is something that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. So it definitely is becoming more mainstream. I think that everybody, almost everybody out there has a sense that things are not right and that something is going wrong. And, uh, and if people don't have that sense, I think they're in denial. There are a lot of people in denial, but I think that a lot of people who even are, are not prepper, preppers, have no intention of prepping, not survivalists, I think that a lot of people sense that something is, is going very wrong. And I think what they can see uh, that's making them feel that way is they're, they're seeing um, the uh, collapse of our economy, the fall of our nation. They're seeing the decline of the dollar. Um, and they're seeing the Great Depression that we're in that they're calling a recession, but it's really a depression. And so a lot of people are out of work because more people are out of work. Crime uh, has increased. And uh, then this 2012 thing came along, but I don't think it really has anything to do with 2012. I think uh, some people have jumped on that bandwagon. But I don't really think it has anything to do with that. I saw this coming. Uh, what, what's happening today, and basically what I'm talking about is I'm talking about uh, just the uh, unlimited uh, printing of new money, which is leading to inflation. Uh, these are the things that I saw coming many, many years, years ago. And so what I saw, and we're also, by no coincidence, I'm sure we're also, we're seeing the same, the first baby boomers are beginning to retire right now. And so at the same time the first baby boomers are beginning to retire, they're beginning to hyperinflate the currency. Now I think there's, there's more going on to it uh, than just that, but I think that certainly is a big um, part of the picture. But people can see uh, prices begin to increase and I think we're just beginning to see the first um, um, increases in, uh, in hyperinflation. Don't think we've been hit by it yet but they are certainly setting the stage for it and they're making no indications that they have any intentions whatsoever of doing anything to correct the problem. The only thing that they are doing is just more of what got us into this problem. And I ask, how can you get out of a problem just by doing more of what you did to get us into that problem? All right, so they're just, there's just nothing makes sense in Washington. The, the, the entire place is just completely corrupt right now. And people sense that. I mean, the uh, uh, Congress approval is at an all-time low. The president's approval is at an all-time low. 
And uh, so people, people can sense that something is going bad wrong here. Who do you live with? Are they willing to be filmed for the show? Are they on board with preparations as well? Okay, I live with my, my wife, Lisa. My two children are both grown right now, and they both have children of their own. We have four grandchildren now. So right now, it's just uh, my wife, Lisa, and I. And yes, Lisa's willing to be filmed. And uh, yes, she is completely on board with me with the, um, with the prepping. Where are most of your preparations? right here in the basement uh, but I have preparations really every place in the house in my garage I store propane and gasoline in the loft of my garage it's just filled with camping equipment so I have propane lanterns and stoves and all that type of equi equipment in the attic we have paper goods like um, extra toilet paper and things like that we really have things in the, my tool room. I've got all kinds of uh, tools stored up that do not require electricity. I like to buy the hand-operated tools like the drills that you turn with a crank instead of run by electricity. So I've got, I have a stockpile of hardware, um, nuts and bolts and screws on up in my, uh, in my tool room. I have another location um, here in the basement where I store um, uh, fuel like a kerosene and so and we have uh, food stored in other places besides here and we really have things stored all over the house but really this right here in our basement is where we store most of our preparations I want to introduce you to my prepping partner. This is my wife, Lisa. And uh, Lisa is the same age that I am. And um, Lisa, tell us in your own words how you feel about my prepping activities. Well, I'm glad that you do the prepping because I work outside the home and it's very hard for me to have the time to do it. And I know it's something that we need to do uh, so if a disaster does hit us, then I feel like we are prepared because you have done that. So I'm here to try to support you in that uh, while you do the necessary prepping. So you are supportive of our prepping. You think it's something that we need to be doing? Yes. And you don't mind if we allot a lot of our family resources uh, to prepping? No. Because you know in the long run that we will reap uh, benefits from our activities. Correct. Today. Or how do you feel about the fact that uh, when I told you we needed to buy silver and gold, the price of silver was about $4 an ounce and gold was about $250 an ounce. And today, as we're recording this, silver is uh, about $45 an ounce. So it's gone from about $4 an ounce to $45 an ounce. And gold is, has gone from about $250 to about $1,500. So how do you feel about that? I feel very good. I feel like our investments are paying off. So. Right. So you feel like that we are prepared for our retirement, even if the government doesn't come through with the Social Security money that they have stolen from us. I feel like we're getting there. I don't know if we'll ever be totally 100% prepared, but yes, I think we're on the right road. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much, and thank you for your support. You're welcome. Why do I want to be on the show? Well, we are all in this together. I want to educate uh, more Americans. That's why I make YouTube videos. Uh, the more Americans who are prepared, the better off we will all be. Um, if my neighbors are prepared, they won't be coming to me looking for supplies because they'll have supplies of their own. I don't think we're going to get through this alone. I think we're going to need uh, each other to uh, get through uh, whatever disaster may be uh, coming upon us. This uh, is a picture of uh, water barrels, uh, 55 gallon drums in my basement where I store water. This is a uh, rain barrel outside my house where I collect additional rain. This is my garage where I keep my rabbits. I raise rabbits and butcher them for meat. Uh, this is another corner of my garage. These are propane tanks that I have uh, store where I store energy. Uh, these are uh, kerosene uh, cans in my basement for additional energy. These are mason jars for our canning. Uh, this is what we're currently working on. We're picking pears right now and drying them uh, to store the pears. 
And uh, this is all sterling silver that I purchased at uh, state sales. This is our retirement account when uh, this, uh, this, this is a pa paper goods, toilet paper and such. Uh, and this is uh, some of the gold and silver that we've sta uh, stashed away for our retirement. This is Survival Doc reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.